Okay, section 1.3. And in our notes, we will start on page two. Remember, we have been talking about the truth values, constructing the truth table for if A, then B, using A as living in New York and B as in living in the United States. All right, so at, at the top of page two, you see this. How can you disprove this? If you live in New York, then you live in the uh, United States, okay? Well, again, um, I mentioned this at the end of the last part of this video, but you must find someone, at least one person who lives in New York and does not live in the United States. If you can find one person, even one person who can live in New York, but not in the United States, okay, that would prove that statement false. The statement, if you live in New York, then you live in the US. Okay. One such counter example would make that false. Okay. So here is what I was saying again. Uh, I wrote this on the front page, but therefore the negation of the statement is you live in New York and you do not live in the United States. That would be a negation of the statement. All right. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying something very important here. Okay. Um, the negation of a conditional does not use the word if. Okay, in other words, a negation of a conditional is not a conditional statement, but instead it's an and statement. You see the word and here? You have to pay really close attention to these uh, small words, you know, connectives. In English, we call them conjunctions, right? Um, so the negation of if A, then B, is the statement A and not B. Let me go ahead and write down what I just said, which is important, okay? The negation of if A then B is A and not B. I hope you can see the pattern here. Very, very important for you to be able to detect and notice these patterns, okay? Pattern recognition is one of the most important skills uh, in mathematics, and it's one of those um, important tools that I hope you will gain by taking a class like liberal arts mathematics. Okay, so um, once you have a statement, a conditional statement, if P then Q, then you can create, watch, you can create three other conditional statements related to the original statement, if P, then Q, okay? And those three statements are called converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Two of them are not the same as the original uh, conditional, but one of them is equivalent to that original conditional. All right, ready for it? Okay, let's get started on these three important derivations of a conditional statement. We start with the original statement, if you live in New York, then you live in the United States, okay? P in this case is living in New York. Q in this case is living in the US. All right, so the first thing you do to, well, the thing you do to uh, create the converse of the statement is switch, switch P and Q, okay? So the converse would be saying, if, now remember, you always start with if, okay? If you live in the United States, remember the last part becomes the first because we switched the order. If you live in the US, then you live in New York. Notice here, I switched living in New York and living in the US, right? I switched P and Q. If, the word if still is at the beginning of the um, sentence and then comes right after the comma. If you live in the US, then you live in New York. This is the converse of the original statement. If you live in New York, then you live in the US, okay? So switching the order will create what is known as the converse. Now, if you negate each without switching, then you get what is called the inverse, right? So this would be if you do not live in New York, then you do not live in the United States. Notice what happened. 
here, the original statement says, if you live in New York, then you live in the US. The inverse is, if you do not live in New York, then you do not live in the United States, okay? All I had to do was to negate each side. So to get the converse, you switch the order. To get the inverse, you negate, okay? Now you can do both. And if you do, you get contrapositive. All right, so what is a contrapositive? You negate and you switch, or you switch and you negate. It doesn't matter which order you do this in. So if you do not live in the United States, then you do not live in New York. Notice here, I could get that. Let, let me write it this way. And maybe I should use different color for, for uh, for a change, okay. Um, I could have gotten this contrapositive by negating each part of the converse. If you do not live in US, then you do not live in New York, okay? That is the, um, that is a contrapositive. So I could negate each part of this after switching, or it's the inverse is obtained by negating this you can switch what has been negated. So if you switch the um, this part and this part, then you get the contrapositive. If you do not live in the US, then you do not live in New York, right? So either you switch and negate or you negate and switch. If you do both of these, you get the contrapositive, right? I will uh, go ahead and, and, and uh, draw a little diagram to illustrate this. Okay, so uh, this I think is a very important diagram for you to learn. Okay. The original statement was if P then Q, right? All right, if you switch the order, then it becomes if Q then P. This is called a converse. If you negate each of the consequent and, uh, and the antecedent, you get the negation of P implying the negation of Q, okay? This is called the inverse. And that's exactly what you see here in the example, right? Now, once you switch and got the converse, and if you negate, the downward arrow means negate, the rightward arrow means switch. If you negate the converse, Okay, then you get the negation of Q implying the negation of P. If not Q, then not P. This is called the contrapositive. And notice here, it is the same thing as the statement obtained by switching the order in the inverse. Okay, so if you switch, you know, if not P, then not Q. If you switch the order, then it becomes if not Q, then not P, that's the contrapositive. So you can switch and negate or negate and switch. Either way, you get the contrapositive. In other words, what we're saying is the contrapositive is the inverse of the converse. It's also the converse of the inverse. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? Okay. You don't have to know what I just said, but um, important, okay? It is important for you to know that if you start with the original statement, negating each will give you the converse. Switching the order would give you the, the uh, con converse. Doing both will result in a contrapositive. Now, take a look at what I just said. Uh, you may or may not have been paying attention to the truth value of this. Remember, I started with a true statement. If you live in New York, then you live in the US. Is the converse true? If you live in the US, does it, uh, does it imply that you live in New York? No, because you have 49 other states besides New York, right? So uh, this turns out to be not exactly correct. It does not have the same truth value as the original statement, if B then Q. How about the negation? How about the inverse? If you do not live in New York, then you don't live in the United States? Well, if you say that, uh, there will be a bunch of people upset with you, all except the, the New Yorkers, okay? Because you can be living in California, right? You don't live in New York, but you can still be in the United States. So this is not 
even true. Okay, so the converse and the inverse do not have the same um, truth value as the original statement P implies Q. How about the last one? The contrapositive says if you do not live in US, let's say you're outside of the US, then there is no way you live in New York. That happens to be true, right? Because if you are outside of the United States, there is no way you can be in New York. All right. So this happens to be a true statement. So what am I saying? Ooh, this is good. Okay. The in the uh, original if then statement, the original conditional statement is logically equivalent to contrapositive. Okay, but not to the inverse or the converse. Okay, so when you switch the order, you may or may not be saying something true. If you take the inverse, you may or may not be saying something true. But if you take the contrapositive, it always, always has the same truth value as the original statement P implies Q. In other words, we say the conditional and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. That's the word we use in order to understand the statements. Okay, so make sure you understand this. This is quite important, okay, for you to um, understand this. Um, this chart, I think, is very helpful, and uh, I encourage you to remember that. You see the same chart in the book. So note that the original conditional, if P then Q, is logically equivalent to its contrapositive, but not to the other two. It turns out the inverse and the converse are uh, logically equivalent to each other, but not to the original statement. Okay, now um, I am going to pause this for a moment and then go into a next uh, video clip um, where we discuss the last subsection of this section, uh, 1.3. And in that last portion, we'll be talking about De Morgan's laws.